As I mentioned in a recent Two Minute Tuesday, BS 991 is being revised and the current draft proposes some fundamental changes that you should be aware of. In this video, which is probably more of a two hour Tuesday, I'm going to go through some of the big changes so far in the area of smoke control. Quick disclaimer, if you rely on BS 991 for your work, you should make sure to read the draft for yourself as we can't cover everything here, but we'll do our best. On we go. As the aim of this video is to provide a summary of smoke control changes to BS 991, I'll actually be reading out the relevant references to save you from having to sign up and open the draft to follow along. I appreciate that some might find this long-winded, uh, but the draft document is hard to navigate, so at least it'll mean that everyone can see and hear what I'm talking about. It was tricky trying to decide how to structure this video, as some of my headings cannibalise other sections, but I'm intending to cover it in the following order. First, systems and strategy. One of the biggest changes is in the area of systems, so we should talk about that first as it will colour the remainder of the points we discussed. Next, control. The second biggest change is in the area of how a system is controlled. From one point of view, control could be broken down into two sections, system control and control products. However, the two parts are inextricably linked, so we'll have to tackle them as a chunk. Third, construction. This will change design approaches, so comes next. Fourth, product. This is a really key area of change and will hopefully be a driver for change in the industry. Cue sharp intakes of breath and raised eyebrows. Fifth, power. These are some subtle changes in the way power supplies are managed. Sixth, Maintenance. There are some long-awaited updates to the maintenance annex which will serve to make systems safer and more reliable. Seventh, a quick note on another related standard that's referenced. And eighth, I've titled Notable Omissions, Anomalies and Required Clarifications. These are things that I am surprised were missing, sound a bit dodgy or definitely need clearing up before the standard is launched. I'll be querying these with the committee, but if you have any you'd like to add to my list, I'll be really interested to hear. Right, now we've covered the structure of this review and my reasoning for choosing this order, I'll not keep you waiting any longer, here's the meat. First up, systems and strategy. This is probably the biggest change. Up until now, natural smoke ventilation systems have been permitted on any height of building, excluding natural facade ventilation on buildings over 30 metres. There have long been concerns that natural shaft ventilation could suffer from smoke logging, where smoke cools as it travels up a very long shaft. There are also concerns about the stack effect. Well, 22.3.2.2 changes that. It states, natural smoke ventilation systems should be used only in buildings up to 30 meters in height with multiple stairs and with travel distances up to those recommended in figure eight. For buildings over 30 meters and or where travel distances are in excess of those recommended in figure eight, a mechanical smoke ventilation system or pressure differential system should be used. Per figure eight, the travel distances remain at seven and a half meters, extended to 15 meters where sprinklers are installed in the apartments. But the prohibition of natural smoke ventilation systems in buildings over 30 meters tall or with single stair cores is an enormous change. The next point is less of a game changer from a smoke ventilation point of view, but does provide clarity on a point that has been the subject of much controversy, the stay put strategy. Section 3.62 notes, in a building with a stay put strategy, all residents are always free to leave their flats if they wish to do so, e.g. if they feel unsafe. But to do so might, under some circumstances, put them at greater risk than remaining within their flats. Whilst from one point of view this has always been the case, to see it clarified in a British standard will bring comfort to those who feel the stay put strategy has been used in an unsafe manner. Moving on to part two, control. As I mentioned, this section will cover both the control of the system and the control system. The first point to note, which marks a key change from previous versions of this document, is section A.2.1 and the associated commentary. The commentary details that fire and rescue services have experience of controls which have been unclearly labelled, which has meant they are unable to be used by the attending fire crews. On simple systems, controls or overrides can be useful for firefighters to turn particular aspects of a system off or on if conditions change during firefighting. On complex systems, firefighters are likely to be reluctant to interact with the systems where the outcome of the interaction is unclear. This would be particularly the case if that interaction had the potential to worsen conditions rather than improve them. This initial part of commentary then goes on to colour everything that is said about control systems. There is a lot of detail here and we don't have time to cover it all in this video, but to sum it up, here are the key aspects. Systems, with the exception of openable vents, should be fully automatic in their operation and should not rely on the interaction of firefighters to achieve their performance objectives 
during either the means of escape or firefighting phases. Smoke control systems should start in firefighting mode at the outset if this is the requirement. Alternatively, variable speed mechanical systems should be controlled using pressure sensors or other means and should not require firefighters to operate controls in order to initiate a high speed mode, sometimes referred to as boost or firefighting mode. The system should have no overrides or manual inputs that change the automatic function of the system. Should overrides be needed, the automatic system should be turned off, overriding all the alarm inputs and removing the automatic function. This is unlikely to occur until the fire incident is deemed over by the firefighters. Control panels should be simple and logical to operate in fire conditions without reliance on operational manuals. The biggest change here is systems starting in firefighting mode and having no overrides or manual inputs that change the automatic function of the system. This will significantly change the way systems are used in a fire scenario and will require changes to the approach by system designers, architects and fire engineers. It will also require training for fire and rescue services to ensure they are aware of what the system is doing when they arrive. We're now going to look at some of the construction related elements of the smoke ventilation system. An important change that is being brought in here is point A, point 5, point 1, point C. The cross-sectional area, free area, of the smoke shaft should be sized according to the requirements of the MSBS with a minimum dimension of 0.85 metres in any direction. Note, the cross-sectional area can vary between 0.6 metres squared and 1 metre squared depending on the height of the shaft and the potential for resistance to flow. Previously, the only shaft types which had side restrictions were natural smoke ventilation systems, which have a minimum cross-sectional area of 1.5 metres squared and a minimum dimension of 850 millimetres in any direction. Whilst we don't have such strict cross-sectional area requirements, we do now have that 850 millimetre requirement. Whilst this won't make a significant amount of difference, as most mechanical extract shafts will be around about 0.8 metres squared cross-sectional area, it is something that designers will now have to take into account. Moving on to product related changes. The most major change is A.5.1 and A.5.2.3i, which states AOVs opening into the shafts or ducts should be smoke control dampers, see A.5.5. Where they enter vertical shafts, they should be multi compartment and should achieve at least the same level of fire resistance as the compartment barrier in which they are fitted. This is a significant departure from approved document B, which states all vents should either be a fire door set, see Appendix C, Table C1, Item 2E for minimum fire resistance, or fitted with a smoke control damper, achieving the same period of fire resistance and designed to operate as described below. This is a welcome change as it clears up any ambiguity as to whether or not standard fire doors can be used as smoke vents. We've seen recent fires where fire doors being used as smoke vents have failed to operate and caused evacuees to be taken from the building wearing smoke hoods and some with smoke inhalation issues. The next big change is found in the notes to A.5.2.3.2. Note 1 states products tested as smoke rated fire doors are not acceptable replacements for smoke control dampers e.g. BSEN 12101 part 2 products with additional tests. Note 2 states, the fitting of actuators to other components to make natural smoke vents or smoke control dampers is not acceptable as no performance has been tested. This finally clears up the acceptability of site installed actuators or window actuators. Whilst it's been patently obvious in BSEN 12101 part 2 that these solutions are non-compliant, this update makes it very clear that these are not acceptable replacements. Next we have A.5.5 which relates to smoke control dampers. It has a very helpful clarification which states that dampers should be classified for reduced leakage S. This upholds BSEN 12101 part 8 but departs from the SCA guide which unhelpfully suggests that the S is optional when it is in fact not. A.5.5 also adds that smoke control dampers should have a minimum operational reliability of C10,000. They are under the control of a system and should be tested operated weekly. Note 2A classification of C300 therefore only covers six years, which is not adequate for smoke control systems. In relation to power, I'm not going to go into too much detail as I'm not an electrician. However, there are some elements that are conspicuous by their absence and also some additions that would be interesting to clarify. Secondary power supply methods previously included an option to provide two separate intakes into the building from the same external substation. That option now appears to have been removed, limiting options to a life safety generator, an independent utility primary network substation to that feeding the primary supply, 
or an uninterruptible power supply. I will be querying this to learn more as to the reasoning behind this change. Another change is in section 23 that states that the UPS battery equipment should be located adjacent to the equipment that it is to support. This is an interesting concept, and further clarity needs to be sought as whether that applies to roof-mounted extract units, as at present it would be unusual to situate a UPS on the roof of a building. Section 6, I have one quick note on a different standard which highlights an upcoming change. This is referenced in 22.3.2.3 Note 1 and states, when published, BSEN 12101 Part 13 will take the place of the designs in the current BSEN 12101 Part 6 and will refer to BSEN 12101 Part 6 for kit and component requirements. The section on maintenance brings welcome change and clarity. I'll run through a series of points which, as far as I can see from looking at other standards and documentation, haven't been raised before. J.2.3 All smoke control systems and fire damper control panels, e.g. stairwell, MSVS, basement, car park, other ventilation, should be inspected daily. In particular, it should be verified that A. The control and indication panel indicates normal operation, or if any fault is indicated, that it has been logged and appropriate actions taken, and B. Any fault recorded the previous day has received attention. J.7 all ducting and shafts should be cleaned at least annually following the correct standards. This includes standard ventilation duct, fire resisting duct and smoke control duct as well as ventilation shafts and smoke control shafts. Certificates of cleaning should be obtained. J.8. Records should be kept for each system and component of active and passive fire protection. Positive evidence of recording of inspections, even where there have been no faults, should be generated as this gives confidence that the inspections are being regularly undertaken. Records should show faults were found, the corrective action, the time taken to complete any corrective action, and any actions taken to prevent reoccurrence. J.9. Faults are not simply a maintenance issue to be dealt with later. Faults in active and passive fire protection measures are a life safety issue. Finally, here is my initial sweep of notable omissions, anomalies, and required clarifications that I intend to raise. Firstly, I'm interested as to why BS 991 was not brought in line with EM 12101 in relation to free area and aerodynamic free area. For a long time, we've had approved document B referring to free area, whilst EM 12101 states that products must test and declare aerodynamic free area. I'd hope to see some movement towards using the more scientific aerodynamic free area measurement. The area of note is section 3.33. Secondly, I couldn't find any reference to requiring control equipment to be certified to BS ISO 21927 Part 9. This is a shame as currently there is no active regulation on control equipment for smoke ventilation systems, just the self-certifying British ISO standard. That having been said, we do have a very bizarre requirement in A.2.2, .2, which states that natural smoke and heat exhaust ventilators should conform to BS ISO 21927 Part 9. This is slightly odd, as BS ISO 21927 Part 9 is the standard for control specification, not natural smoke and heat exhaust ventilators, which should conform to BS EN 12101 Part 2. Third, we have a reference to MSBS system's acceptability parameters as follows. A.3.2.1 Note 1. Accepted parameters are a velocity through the open stairwell door away from the stair and pressure differential across the closed stairwell door in each scenario. This strikes me as slightly unusual, as typically these parameters will form part of the test criteria for pressure differential systems rather than MSVS systems. Whilst we would still measure these criteria when we're carrying out tests on an MSVS system, they aren't usually our design criteria, so I'd like more clarity around this point. Fourth, whilst pressure sensors are referred to as methods to stop excessive depressurization of extract zones, Reverse hung doors aren't referred to, despite these having a much lower likelihood of failure in comparison to pressure transducers. Fifth, there is a comment in A.5.1.3.J that no services should be contained within the smoke shaft, including control devices for the smoke shaft. This is in line with previous guidance, however it has previously been acceptable to use the smoke shaft for cabling for the smoke ventilation system. We will require some clarity as to whether this is the case. My sixth and final observation so far is regarding 22.3.2.3, a point which states, a mechanical smoke ventilation system in accordance with A.3.3 that is installed in the protected lobby or protected corridor directly adjacent to the stairwell enclosure. 
And this seems to contravene SCA guidance that the extract point should be remote from the stair core, and I would again seek more clarity as to this point. Well, that was quite a marathon. I hope this video has been helpful in providing a summary of changes that I've noticed to the smoke control requirements in the draft version of BS991. Please be aware that this draft is likely to have some changes prior to launch, and that until such a time as it is published, the existing BS991 is still in force and must be followed. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you'd like more content like this, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And as always, I'll look forward to seeing you next week. Bye for now.